Hi, this is Trent from Trent's YouTube channel. How are you? Oh, I'm glad to hear you're doing well. I'm doing tremendous, thanks for asking. That's how I typically open cold calls. I've been working in software sales since 2018. And today we're gonna to talk about how to overcome any objection. I've made over 60,000 cold calls and I still get absolutely body bagged on the phone. I face rejection daily, I get told no, I get hung up on often. And if there's anything you take away from this video, it's dealing with a rude prospect customer. It never feels any better, but don't let that ruin your day or carry into other calls. It's important to have a short memory. And just because you had a poor interaction with person A doesn't mean that you should carry that attitude or negative mentality into speaking with person B. The prospect isn't just a name on a screen. It's a real human behind the call. So keep that in mind, empathize with people that they're incredibly busy and that you're interrupting their days, calling them out of the blue. So naturally you're gonna face a lot of objections. And as I think about the framework for cold call objection handling, there's really three parts of those. Part one is who are you calling? Part two is what are you saying on the phone? Cold call script that I'll share with you here today. And then next, how do we actually overcome the objections? And there's typically two objections. There's either an objection at the very beginning of the call. Hey, I'm in a meeting. Uh, you caught me in the blue. Who are you? Wh who are you and what do you want? Why are you calling me? Or it's the tail end objection. We don't have any budget. We're not interested. We already have a solution. Da, da, da. And I'm gonna share exactly what I would say based on my experience making tens of thousands of cold calls. First and foremost with who you're calling, if you're getting destroyed on the phone, also ask yourself, are you calling the right prospects? Are they even qualified to buy? Are you calling VP C levels or are you calling low level managers? What quality of accounts are you calling into? If you're B2B like me, business to business, are you calling companies with revenues gr greater than 100 million? Are you calling small companies? Are you calling consumers B2C, trying to sell insurance, vacations, whatever it may be? So depending on what you're selling, this is gonna vary because if you're speaking with a high power executive, it's gonna be a little different than speaking with just an average consumer. From the lens of B2B, I think of prospecting as mining for gold. Think about that show, Alaska Gold Rush. They're on this beautiful terrain in Alaska. They're next to a river. They have a bunch of miners. They have this big sleuth machine and they're digging dirt, rocks. They're putting it in the sleuth machine. The sleuth machine is shaking out the rocks, spraying water on it. And eventually gold is gonna come out of the other side. Gold for us salespeople is setting meetings, generating pipeline, closing revenue, and getting paid big commission checks, getting promoted, and living a happier life as a result of our success, because success is important. We need to be mindful of what rocks, what prospect we're actually putting in our sequence and calling. We wanna have a diversified pipeline. So we wanna be calling the accounts that can spend the most money with us, the prospects that actually are qualified to buy, some prospects that may not be able to spend as much money with us, but may be more transactional. Some prospects that are warmer, that may be interacted with content or visit our website. Some prospects that are cold. You wanna have all these different types of rocks, ground, whatever, in the sleuth machine to get the gold. It's the same thing with prospecting and cold calling. So once you add all these prospects to your sequence and you start calling, you'll start getting people on the phones. When I cold call, I always start out with, hey, this is Trent from, insert my company name, how are you? The reason I use the how are you is because I want to assess how they are. If they say I'm doing well, how are you? Like the example we opened the, the video with, I know that they're in a good mood and I can get into my pitch. If they just say I'm doing okay, you know that you're already behind the eight ball and you need to get directly into it. Hey, this is Trent from insert my company name, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, uh, thank you so much for asking. The reason I'm calling you specifically is that I'm following up on a recent email I had sent you. Does insert my company name ring a bell? The reason I'm calling you is I noticed that you oversee the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button now if you haven't already. The reason I'm calling you is that I noticed that you oversee the HR vision and strategy and I partner with other executive leaders like yourself to help you to improve employee engagement, reduce attrition, and other positive outcomes like that. Can we find time to get introduced before the end of the year? 
During my cold call script, I'm starting with how are you, I'm immediately going into the reason I'm calling you is, and that will be unique to you, your company, your value proposition, and who you're speaking with specifically. Psychologically, when you call somebody out of the blue, they wanna know who are you, what do you want, why are you calling them? So always hit them with the reason, okay? And then insert the reason that makes most sense for you. And then as soon as you give them a little bit enough, make the ask for their time immediately. And that's when, you start, that's when you're gonna start to face a lot of objections. So now into part three, facing the actual objections. There's really two phases of the cold call that you're gonna experience objections. Phase one is immediately in the intro in the first five to 15 seconds. You're gonna ask them how they are. And if they don't respond back to you, or they may say, you caught me in the middle of a meeting, and you're thinking, okay, so why did you answer the phone during a meeting? You catch them right before they're about to run into a meeting, or they'll immediately say, wait, who are you? That's just an entry level objection. And the key principle here is do not let the prospect rush the call. If it feels rushed, it's you who are rushing the call. So if they try and say, I'm in a meeting, call me back later. Say, can I have 30 seconds for me to tell you the reason why I'm calling you? That's how I respond every time. If they ever give me an objection at the beginning, look, can I have 30 seconds for me to tell you the reason why I'm calling you? And if they push back on that, say, look, I'll plan on following up with you later. how does this afternoon at 3 p.m. work for me to give you a quick call back? And if they say, okay, okay, say, I'll send you a calendar invite for them so that you can expect my call. So if they try and rush you off, try and get them to stay on so that you can go into your pitch, it's better to speak with someone now than an arbitrary time in the future that they may or may not agree to. If they absolutely rush you off, say, look, I'm not going away anytime soon. I'm gonna give you a call back. Let's find some time for you to actually expect my call. And sometimes that will work. I set a meeting this week with a large restaurant brand. I had been calling her for months, so she knew that I wasn't gonna give up. And she's like, yeah, you can follow with me and schedule a call. I say, perfect, okay. Let me confirm your email. I'll send you a calendar invite for later this week. And the purpose of the call is to discuss your top priorities, allow me to share a customized overview how my solution can help. And then if we see alignment, great. We can continue the conversation. And if not, we absolutely can part ways. So that's how you deal with that first objection. The next cohort of objections is when you make the ask for the time or you give your value prop, they're then gonna hit you with, I don't have budget, we already have a solution, I'm not interested. Those are the big three. What I would suggest you do as an exercise after this video is get out a piece of paper like I do right here and write down what are the most common objections you face, beginning with those three, and then write down exactly what you would say in response so that when you hear them on the phone, you're automatic. You're not thinking, you're just, you're acting based on instinct. And that's how the best athletes are. They play on instinct, they don't overthink. The general framework for responding to these objections is always reaffirm back to them hey, I'm not asking for any budget today. You've confirmed that you heard them and you acknowledge that they said they don't have any budget. Oh, we have a solution. Hey, I imagine you had a solution in place today for an organization of your quality. Okay, we validated them. Oh, you're not interested? Okay, well, we're not looking to to change anything today. So so now they're thinking, okay, well, less pressure. You, You validate them and then you immediately say, look, The reason for my call is I believe that we can help your organization for this specific reason. I'm not looking to change anything. I just wanna get introduced with you in the spirit of partnership so that we can determine if we can help you recognize incremental value today, but also potential for long-term partnership as well. And you wanna remove the stakes, remove the, the burden of oh, I don't wanna meet with this guy because I don't see the upside. You need them to see, okay, I'm not looking to sell you today. I'm not even looking to sell you in the next call. I'm looking to build a relationship with you. When I started my software sales career as a sales development rep, it was all about transactional set meetings at all costs, does not matter. And and you're you're just trying to set meetings and that's important. You are selling time in B2B. You always wanna set the meeting, always wanna sell time. But also tell them, look, I get it, that's okay you don't have any budget. We're looking to earn your business in the next 12 to 24 months. We just want an opportunity to get in the door 
to meet with you. And the reason why that meeting matters for you and you should justify 20 minutes out of your time is because we helped this other quick service restaurant organization. They had significant attrition by day 60 employees. We were able to set up an onboarding feedback program and we were able to help them better understand the points of friction and improve their business and take risk out of it. If we're able to help you do the same, would that be worth your time? You wanna have these, uh, these responses just ready to go so that based on the way the conversation goes, you wanna be agile because you can't over prepare. You can't listen to this video and write down everything I say and, and just repeat it back. You gotta write down what you would say so that you can then insert, okay, I need to play this card in this situation. And you ultimately want them to say, you know what, this person's not going away. They've made a few good points. Um, although I, I, I already have a solution, I'm interested in hearing them out so that I can understand best practices and just maybe make enhancements to my program or understand what's what else is out there in the market. Or maybe I truly have, I would sometimes I'll say, look, well, is there anything you would change about your process today? And as you think about negative consequences and pain, it always revolves around people, process, technology, time, and also cost as well. Those are the five levers that they may be having problems with. And if you can even get a hint of it, a sniff of it, you wanna set up the meeting, you wanna exploit that, and you wanna position why your solution is gonna be the answer to all of those problems. If you recognize value in today's video, subscribe to the channel now and click on the first link in the description below for a look at my actual cold calling script in a couple different scenarios and my entire cold calling strategy and framework that I think you'll find immense value out of for only $30. You'll make it back in literally one day of cold calling.